Hey coding crew, today I want to cover a really important topic and that's coding for vaccine administration. Welcome to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Victoria. I'm a medical coder, auditor, educator, national speaker, podcaster, YouTuber, content creator, and on my channel I discuss tips, tricks, and tutorials to make you successful in a medical coding career. So if you've been coding since we were in ICD-9, you might remember that when we used to code for vaccines, you used to have different ICD codes for the type of vaccine you were giving. For if it was a flu versus a pneumo versus an MMR, and it was such a pain. And one of the great things that happened when we transitioned to ICD-10 is actually the diagnosis code changed to just Z23. So any immunization you give now is going to have Z23 as the diagnosis and you no longer will have to cross match and make sure that all of the diagnoses match the appropriate vaccination given. Hallelujah, IC10 made one things in our life easier. When you're coding for vaccines, you have two things you're probably going to code for. The medication and for the administration. Now there are certain state programs where there might be vaccines that are given for free. I'm not going to talk about the specifics of those programs and how you bill for those. Check out those guidelines for the state on how they want those billed out. Right now I want to focus on the coding for the administration of the vaccines. So when we're coding for vaccines or immunizations, one of the first things you want to think about is the route. So how is this being given to the patient? Sub-Q, IV, is it an oral vaccination? The next thing you want to think about is the patient's age because there are some administration codes that are based off of age so if the patient is out of that age range you can't use that code. Next you also want to look at potentially if counseling is performed and documented and that is a big key and things that people miss a lot with these vaccine administrations is there are certain codes that require counseling and you have to prove that the counseling was done, not documented, not done. If it doesn't say you did counseling, you didn't do counseling. Another consideration is if we're doing it by component because we're using the with counseling codes or if we're doing it per vaccine. Keep an eye on those. When they say component in CPT, what does that mean? Well, think about an MMR. How many components are in an MMR? Well, there's measles, there's mumps, and there's rubella. So there's three different components in an MMR. So you would use a 90460 for that first component, 90461 for the second component, 90461 again for the third component. Versus if it's a patient who wasn't counseled or is above the age of 18, that way you would just use 90471 because that's just one vaccine, but it has three components. And then just to mix it up, there's a couple of different codes that we use just for Medicare patients, so pay attention to their insurance. Now, let's get into our book and take a look at some of these codes. So our first set of codes here are 90460, 90461, and if you look at them, they are through, through age 18, which means uh, 19 and up would be not included in this code, via any route of administration, with counseling by a physician or other qualified healthcare professional, and it is for the component. So these here are our component codes. Okay, so in order to use any of these codes, it has to be a patient that is younger than 19 years of age, and we have to have documented counseling, and it is per component. Now our next chunk of codes here are 90471-90472 are per vaccine. So you can see here this is um, per vaccine and they are percutaneous, intradermal, subcutaneous, or intramuscular vaccines and they are per each vaccine. So instead of components, they're by each vaccine. So even if you're giving an MMR, you would only use this code once because that's one vaccine versus the components here where we're using three different codes, 90460, 90461, 90461 again for each component of that MMR. After that, we have the 90473 and the 90474s. 
And these are for our intranasal or oral vaccines. One thing I wanna pay close attention to for you guys here is that when you are coding for these, look at these ones here. It says you cannot report this 90473 in conjunction with 90471. So if you're doing an oral vaccine and it's not like one of these ones, cause it says here like any root, you can only add on this 90474 cause this one doesn't have that do not report. It actually says to use the 90474 in conjunction with the component codes or the per vaccine codes. So just make sure you're aware here, this 90473, you cannot use it with the 90471. And this one here is actually an add-on, not just for this code, but you can use this add-on oral vaccine code with the 90460 for the components, the 90471s with the per vaccine, or of course, if you're giving multiple oral or intranasals, you can use it in addition to the um, 90473 code here. Now, of course, our beloved Medicare has their own administration codes that they use just for three different vaccines. First is the Medicare Influenza, which uses G0008, the Pneumococcal, which uses G0009, and then the Hepatitis B is G0010, and that's for Medicare. And some of our Medicare Advantage patients, I can't say specifically which ones because that might vary based on your area. You know what, let me just show you a quick example of some vaccine administration coding. If we have a 16-year-old patient coming to the office for a flu shot and the MMR, if we are doing counseling, and again, we have to document that that counseling was performed, you would use 90460, and you would use 90460 again, and then 90461, 90461. So the reason we use that 90460 twice is that description of that code says it is for the first component of each vaccine. So that first 90460 is for the first component of each vaccine, meaning the first influenza. And then again, first component, for the next vaccine is the MMR. And then those second add-on components for the mumps and rubella, 90461, 90461. So that's another thing you have to keep in mind is that that 90460 is for the first component of each vaccine. So if we're doing five different vaccines that day, we would use that 90460 for the first component of each of those five vaccines. So we would use it five times. If no counseling is performed, remember we use these codes that don't have the components, they're just per vaccine. So we would use a 90471 for that first vaccine and then 90472 for the second whole vaccine. Another thing I want to talk about with vaccines is that you actually can't bill that nurse visit office visit, the 99211, with a vaccine administration code because there's a CCI at it. So there's, that's not even one you can like slap a modifier on. So those level one established patient office visits can never be billed with vaccine administration. It's double dipping actually if you would bill for a nurse visit at the same time that the patient's just coming in to have vaccines done. Another thing to think about when we're discussing per vaccine versus per component is flu shots. Think about when providers are having flu shot clinic days in their practice where patients are coming in, they're getting their flu shot rapid fire, boom, 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 boom. In those situations, sometimes providers don't have time to do all the counseling. They don't want to worry about documenting all the counseling. So is it easier from a workflow process to just say, hey, everything is a 90471 except for those Medicare patients? So when I looked at my fee schedule, there's no difference between a 90471 and a 90460. So where that extra reimbursement comes in is where you're actually billing those additional components, where you're doing like a TDAP where there's extra components and you're billing extra. So for something like a flu shot, it might not make a difference because you're just billing that one base code and it's gonna be the same reimbursement. I am not saying don't counsel the patient. I'm not saying don't document or do document if you did or did not counsel. All I'm saying is that reimbursement for the 90460 and the 90471 are probably the same. So again, those reimbursements are really only gonna change when you're doing additional components. But remember, you want a code based off of what is correct what is compliant, and not just what will be financially advantageous. So I hope that helped clarify some of your confusion about vaccine administrations. If it did, make sure you give this video a big thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe, hit the notification bell so that you don't miss any more of my helpful episodes. I will see you in the next video. And until then, please just keep on coding on.